Well, hello there and welcome to School of the Spirit. We are discussing strictly spiritual matters here. And in the last episode, we started to talk about uh, two powerful, um, desperate kind of prayers that can produce great results in the life of a believer. You know, it's often said that desperate times call for desperate measures. And so when you are in a fix, when you are in a desperate situation, when your back is against the wall and um, the whole world has turned on you, you need um, an emergency line. You need, you need an intervention, a divine intervention to come in real quick for you. And just like we know that prayer is what calls the attention of heaven, you, you need to know what kind of prayer to pray in that kind of desperate situation that can produce great results or like the bible says in james 5 16 in the amplified translation that the the prayer of the righteous man produces great power you need a kind of prayer that you are as you are assured of that is powerful in his delivery a prayer that can call the attention of heaven and get God to move on your behalf. We started to discuss this from the last episode. And I told you these two prayers are cries and groans. Cries and groanings. Cries and groanings. And I showed you from scripture, even in the life of Jesus, where these two prayers were used simultaneously and the great results that they achieved. You know, in Psalm 61 verse 2 it says hear my cry O lord 61 verse 1 and 2 it says hear my cry O lord and attend to my prayer from the ends of the earth i will cry to you when my heart is overwhelmed it says lead me to the rock that is higher than i so every time the spirit of god leads you to activate the prayer of christ it is a prayer that calls on divine remembrance it's a prayer that seeks God to remember an individual. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 56, I think I should read that scripture um, again. We read it in the last um, episode. I think I should read it again so you, you could get it. Psalms 56 in verse 8 and 9. It says, you number my wanderings. You put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. So the prayer of Christ activates remembrance. That's why God puts your tears in a bottle of remembrance. He preserves it so that in a day when you need God to move on your behalf, you need divine intervention, that prayer captures God's remembrance over that individual. But then again, there's the prayer of groanings. And the Bible tells us that the Spirit of God Himself makes those groanings through us. You know, the Spirit of God prays through us. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God would discharge His mind, His emotions, His will through our bodies, through our intellect. And that's the reason why when you groan in the place of prayer, the Bible says at that time, It's the Spirit of God making intercession for us. And in verse 27 of Romans chapter 8, the Bible says this intercession is in line with God's will for us. And because it's in line with God's will for us, it goes in verse 28 to say that that's the prayer that causes everything to work together for our good. It says, for we know that all things work together. That's the result of an intercession carved out by the spirit of god that is in accordance to god's perfect will for his people if you read the story of jesus and the resurrection of lazarus in john chapter 11 you will see how intermittently these two prayers were used and it was i believe that it was jesus's secret to generating so much power from god that brought lazarus who was dead and buried for four days out of the grave now in john chapter 11 in verse 33 the bible tells us 
in verse 33 there that jesus when jesus saw her weeping that's mary now and the jews who came with her weeping he groaned in the spirit and was troubled if you read it in the amplified translation the bible says he was deeply moved in spirit and was troubled in verse 35 he wept he had switched into this dimension of prayer in verse 38 he came back again groaning in himself and then when you finally go to verse 43 the bible says he cried out with a loud voice lazarus come forth and the dead man who had been buried for four days came back to life this simply tells you that groaning is so powerful a prayer that is capable of moving the spirit to act because the bible says in verse 33 where we read in the amplified translation that he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled when he groaned he was deeply moved in spirit so when you groan it, it activates the move of the spirit now you must realize this is not just something you can decide to do when you get into the place of prayer the spirit of god takes over and at that time he's the one that initiates either or both kinds of prayers at that moment so it's not just something you do on your own it has to be inspired by the spirit of god but this this the essence for this broadcast is to teach you what happens when the spirit of god inspires this kind of prayer the bible says he groaned in the spirit and was troubled so groaning in the spirit it's that kind of prayer that really moves the spirit to act it moves the hand of god on your behalf i want to read another scripture but this time around in the living bible translation first corinthians chapter 2 in verse 16 here's what he says okay i'll, I'll read it in the new king james um, and then i'll read it in the living bible translation because i want to show you how this prayer moves the spirit of god moves the hand of god on our behalf in verse 16 of first corinthians chapter 2 he says for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ but the living bible translation says how could he for certainly he has never been one to know the lord's thoughts or to discuss them with him or to move the hands of god by prayer when i saw this scripture I was amazed it says to move the hands of god by prayer so prayer is so powerful that it can cause the hand of god to move it can influence the grace of god your way it can influence a delivery of the power of god disbursed towards you this is what groaning as a form of prayer does for an individual jesus practiced these two kinds of prayer and he brought lazarus from the dead now i'm going to tell you or teach you uh, uh, the similarity between groanings and cries what they have in common these two aspects of prayer and i've told you that cries are the prayers that activate divine remembrance and groanings activate the move of the hand of god over an individual either ways these are powerful prayers to pray in desperate situations you remember when Samson was brought out to play spot for the Philistines? He cried to God and said, Lord, remember me. And God remembered him and he avenged his enemies. So these are powerful prayers and to pray in desperate situations. But I want to show you what they have in common, the similarity. Because most often the Spirit of God uh, may inspire you or, or simulate both experiences when you pray number one they come as an expression of deep pain and sorrow when you pray by crying or groaning you must realize that groanings and cries are an expression of deep pain and sorrow it's it's it, it, it's the pent up of your emotions that is discharged you are praying from a place of pain and sorrow and so it's a cry that God, or it's a prayer that God cannot despise. Number two, they are capable of influencing the supernatural and producing tremendous results. 
They are capable of producing tremendous results by influencing the supernatural. Hezekiah wept before God, and God reversed his decision of death and gave him 15 extra years. Jesus cried and groaned in the spirit, and Lazarus came back to life. Several instances in, in scripture when people cried, sometimes crying to Jesus, and they got their healing. Remember the story of Bartimaeus. He cried, son of David, have mercy on me. He was able to influence the supernatural around Jesus and it brought him his miracles. So they are capable of influencing the supernatural and producing tremendous results. Number three, both kinds of prayer are very strong instruments of deliverance. They are very strong instruments of deliverance. Now let's read a few scriptures. Psalms 3 verse 4. Psalms 3 verse 4. It says, I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. Powerful prayer that brings deliverance. I cried to the Lord with my voice and he heard me from his holy hill. Psalms 18 and verse 6. Psalms 18 and verse 6, it says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord. I cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his temple, and my cry came before him, even to his ears. You want to activate deliverance from satanic oppression, from demonic molestations, from, from the attacks of men. Every time you are in desperate need of deliverance, these are the kinds of prayers to use. And then, if you read that verse 6 of Psalms 18 down through to verse 19, it just speaks about deliverance and divine intervention. How God delivered him from a strong enemy and how God delivered him and brought him to a broad place. So, groanings and cries are very strong instruments for deliverance. You see, when a man is going through oppression, is being squeezed is being molested in a corner in any aspect of his life that has that that will that will it will well up an amount of pain emotions and and, and sorrows waiting to be discharged so if in that the spirit of god through prayer begins to cry or groan through you that's the prayer that can activate deliverance from that um, satanic onslaught that a believer goes through there are cities that need deliverance there are families in need of deliverance there are individuals in our world today oppressed obsessed possessed by the enemy there are nations in their need of deliverance if only god can find intercessors that are ready to cry and groan and travail until the nation, until the individual, until the city, the family, the territory is able to break through and experience divine deliverance. And then number four, they guarantee divine escapes from death. They guarantee divine escapes from death. Divine escapes from death. In Second Kings chapter 20 verse 5, Hezekiah cried to God, and God added 15 more years. God told him, he said, I've heard your prayers, I've seen your tears, and I will heal you. Divine escapes from death. You know, in Psalms 68 verse 20, the Bible says, Unto God belongs escapes from death. When the shadow of death is cast on an individual, these are the powerful, desperate prayers to use to activate escapes from death. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, the Bible tells us of the Lord Jesus himself. How through prayers, these kinds of prayers, he was able to escape death. In verse 7, the Bible says, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear. Do you know that Jesus, in his passion, he lost so much blood right from when he was whipped, 
to carrying the cross all the way to Golgotha. It was possible that Jesus would have died before getting to the cross. And if Jesus had died before getting to the cross, there was no way he would have fulfilled the divine, the claims of divine justice and bringing salvation to mankind. The Bible says, cost is everyone who hangs on the tree. So it was the sting that he needed to hang on the cross and die. And in that way, pay the ultimate price for the sin of the world. So it appears that it was these prayers that he prayed that strengthened him to go through the rigorous and gruesome process to endure even till death. Number two, eventually when Jesus died, remember, the Bible says that through one man, sin entered the world and death reigned through sin. That's in Romans chapter 5. So death obviously became the final captor of humankind. That's why in Hebrews chapter 9 it says, Just as it is appointed once for men to die. So it looked like death became the end for every human being. Death was not just a spirit and individual, but it was a place where the souls of men were captured. But remember David quoting uh, speaking prophetically about the Christ in Psalm 16, when you read from verse 9, he says, For you will not suffer my soul uh, to see corruption. Corruption there spoke of death. It was possible that even after the death of Jesus, he would have been trapped by death itself as a personality. But he was able to conquer death. He was able to escape death. And then he became the one who brought many out of death and Hades. The Bible says in Hebrews 5 verse 7 that he offered up prayers and supplications with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death as a personality, as a captor, as the captor of the entire human race. Remember in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, the Bible says that through death he destroyed him who had power over death, which was the devil, and delivered all those who had the fear of death, who were subject to bondage because of the fear of death. So, this is a powerful mystery. Jesus escaped dying before the cross. And even when he died on the cross, he escaped the hold, the bondage of death. If Jesus had not resurrected, he, his work of salvation was not completed. And it was this prayer he prayed in the garden, groanings and cries, that went ahead into the future to secure him life, to secure him eventual resurrection and victory over death. And because he was victorious over death, we are sharing in that victory today. He says, I've come that they may have life and have it in abundance. And we now have victory in Christ Jesus because through prayer, he was able to secure that victory ahead of time. And you see, this is what makes prayer so powerful not only the kind of prayer but that prayer is such a force that can be sent ahead into the future and it can orchestrate in accordance to god's will that which you must see or that which must find expression through your life so there you have it brothers and sisters two powerful desperate prayers you can pray when you are in desperate times or you are caught up with desperate situations groanings and cries and i want you to remember today that every time you groan or you cry it's a prayer to god and it's occasioning divine remembrance for you it is orchestrating the move of the hand of god on your behalf so after groaning you should celebrate because victory is sure the bible says weeping endures for the night but joy comes in the morning. And I believe that you are coming into a season of joy. I believe that your groanings of yesterday has broken you into a season of joy and rejoicing in this season where you will come into the harvest and the fullness of all God that has spoken concerning you. I want to pray for you right now. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will inspire your people by the Spirit in the place of prayer. That as they groan and they cry, let there be the birthing of new seasons. Let there be the birthing of greater manifestations of your life and your power that is in them. 
may they be able to switch the seasons of their life using these powerful expressions of prayer as they cry and weep in your presence give them peace give them strength let generate let let power be generated tremendous power be generated as they pray and let there be a change in all that concerns them in jesus mighty name amen i believe that this has brought you to be well informed about these powerful dimensions or kinds of prayer now is left for you to go into the practice remember the holy spirit is one who leads us who helps us when we pray so i want you to depend on him trust in his ministry to help you and by his help do great and mighty things for the kingdom i'll see you in the next episode god bless you bye for now